It's more than a highlight show. It's a football night tradition. For 35 years, the best of Minnesota prep football. We love football, and it shows. Old Dutch presents the Carol 11 Prep Sports Extra. Now, here's your host, Randy Shaver. Hi, everybody. Thanks for staying up late with us tonight. We are excited about exclusively announcing all 92 players in this year's Minnesota Football Showcase All-Star Game. Coming up, Dave... Uh, Dave Fritzy, the game director, will join me to release the names of all 92 players taking part in December. So stay tuned for that. Well, we start our coverage tonight with the Spotlight Game 6A quarterfinal, unbeaten Lakeville North against St. Michael Albertville. Brian Curtis, five yard touchdown run, the number one rated Panthers up 7 0. Later on, fourth and goal. Brennan Kubler, one yard TD run. 21-0 Lakeville North. Second quarter, how about this punt? Evan Peterson puts it down inside the one yard line. The Panthers defense was a menace all night. Will Mostart, the pressure forces the intentional grounding. 21-0 halftime, it's North. And then Raja Nelson, touchdown run to make it 28-0. Of course, this game played at TCO. And then great offensive line work by Lakeville North, and it leads to a great pass. Touchdown by Kubler to Nelson, 57 yards to make it 35-0. And then Mostart, the crushing sack. Lakeville North wins big tonight, 35-8 to advance to the state semifinals. I think we came out as a team together. We played, we had good chemistry. Uh, at the, end, for, uh, the beginning of the game, I said we got to come out with energy and we got to give it all we got, and we we sure did. It showed on the first two drives, and we just kept our momentum rolling. I can't tell you how fun it is to coach these guys. You know, they feel like you have a bunch of toys that you get to play with, and um, they're just as much fun at practice as they are to play with them in games. But uh, special group, they work hard, they love each other. It's awesome. So congratulations to Brian Vossen and Lakeville North and guess who they get to play in the state semifinals. Crosstown rival Lakeville South. They took on Woodbury tonight. South the number six seed. Woodbury a one seed, but not tonight. Tavian Layden, 40 yards on the touchdown run. 7-0 Lakeville South. Woodbury would come back. Brock Reinhardt scores the touchdown here to get the Royals back in the game. But it was all Lakeville South and that offense that they have adapted from Elk River. How about Noah Fiedler? 55 yards on the touchdown run. Final score was 28-14, Lakeville South. Well, they finally finished that Blaine Eastview game after that power outage last night in the third quarter. Lucas Becker and company for the Bengals earn a berth in the state semifinals. They beat Eastview 42-14 the final. So the state 6A semifinals are now set. Last night, Eden Prairie won, so the bracket is ready to go. It'll be Eden Prairie taking on Blaine and then Lakeville South, a six seed taking on Lakeville North. Should be a lot of fun. All right, we were in St. Cloud tonight, SMB Wolfpack. Jalen Suggs to Craig McDonald against Delano. Down inside the two yard line sets up Suggs. Short TD run. This is a 5A state quarter final game. Suggs, the quarterback, sneaks it in. 7-0 SMB. And then later, watch this. This is why Craig McDonald is being recruited Division I as a junior. Watch this punt return for a touchdown. 87 yards. He makes it look so easy. SMB wins tonight to advance. 14-7 the final. Winona and Wasika in Farmington tonight. Big night for number 32, Joe Hagan for Wasika. Eight yard TD run to make it 12 0 in favor of Wasika. Then later, Hagan again. This one from two yards out, a short TD run coming up here in the second quarter to make it 18 zip. And then for good measure, right before the half, it's Hagan again. He scored five touchdowns on the ground. Winona came into this game undefeated and ranked number one in 4A. Not tonight. 49-7 was the final. 
So the Wolfpack advanced with a victory over Delano. St. Paul Johnson won last night, and they will get Wilmer, who beat Hermantown tonight, 44 to nothing. We were in New Ulm tonight for the big state 2A matchup, Redwood Valley and Minneapolis North. Adam Bombersbach, six yard TD run for Redwood Valley, six nothing in front, but North would come back. Zach Yeager to Eli Campbell. 30 yard gain on this pass play, and it would set up a Keon Porter 12 yard TD run. Minneapolis North remains undefeated. They win to advance. 20 to 12 was the final. And a reminder next Friday night, we will name our 32nd annual All Metro football team offense, defense, coach of the year next Friday night. We'll be right back with the Minnesota Showcase roster. Stay with us. I'm Omar Brown from Minneapolis North, cornerback, and you're watching Prep Sports Extra. Is he coming down? Okay, great. <clears throat> Super duper. I would uh, chat with everybody online here, but I am not, I don't have my phone out here, and Ryan is not here tonight because. We have Dave Fritzy and the uh, showcase roster. So I was hoping that uh, Bill Strandy from our social media team would be down here to see if there were any questions or anybody had any thoughts about the uh, rosters that we're about to name. All of these players have been notified and have agreed to play in the game, but not all the players know who else is playing. So uh, that roster has not been officially released until after tonight. So we're the first ones to release the entire roster. That's fine. So uh, Dave Fritzy, who's been the uh, longtime director of the All-Star Game, is uh, going to be here in studio. And we're going to talk about uh, the roster for the North and the South. So that's coming up. So hopefully you're hanging in there to watch it. All-Star Game is set for mid-December and Maple Grove star running back Evan Hall headlines the North team as they take on the South in the showcase game played at U.S. Bank Stadium. Welcome back to the Prep Sports Extra. Joining me, the director of the Minnesota Football Showcase, Dave Fritzy, and we'll talk to Dave in just a second. 92 players from across the state are on the rosters of both teams. My first question is, how do you pick them? How do you divide the 92 from North and South? Randy, we've got two separate selection committees for coaches. We've got a Metro committee and an outstate committee. The Metro committee will meet um, and select the North and the South Metro kids, and the outstate committee will also meet and select their North and South kids. In the Metro, we kind of divided on the 94, 394 yeah. uh, freeways, uh, whatever is North and South. Uh, once they're done rating their players, then the two chairs of each committee get together to uh, finalize the final teams. All right, and so that's how we get to 92. Let's release the North roster, starting at running back. You already saw Evan Hull of Maple Grove. Also joining him at running back, Irondale's Parker Freiburg is gonna carry the rock for the North. The senior named the Suburban Gold District MVP, over 1,400 yards rushing this year. Freiburg and Hall, the fullback from St. Paul Johnson, Demarion Nelson is on this team. Also, Camden Arndt, 
of Morris. He's 6'3", 200. Reese Kapsner played for an undefeated Piers team this year. And Peyton Madison of New London Spicer, also a big guy, 6'3", 235. You want to talk about big? How about the offensive line? Lucas Becker out of Blaine. He is a, a big guy. So is Kyle Downs, who's heading to North Dakota on scholarship. Brandon Westberg is 6'4", 270. He's going to North Dakota State out of Cambridge. Thuringer and Lindemann, both very good players. In fact, Lindemann's going to North Dakota. Five more guys up front. It's uh, Boudreaux, it's Parsick, Carr, Joey Lombard, who's headed to South Dakota, and Becker High's Brandon Gustafson at 6'6", 260. And the North also added Zach Zarembinski as an honorary team member. The Hill Murray Stars currently battling a brain bleed after collapsing during a Saturday playoff game. The North will have two quarterbacks. One of them is David Roddy out of Breck. Very good football player at 6'5", 250, but recently announced he's going to play Division I basketball. So this guy's a great all-around athlete. Who will he throw to? Well, how about the big-time receiver in Buffalo, Trayton Welch at 6'3", 207. Made 71 catches for 1,300 yards and 16 touchdowns. And then add James Buck out of Orono, another outstanding receiver. 50 catches, 970 yards, and 11 touchdowns. The Suburban Red District Offensive MVP. Great player. So the five receivers joining those two, Ryan Bieberdorf out of Bemidji, Braden Tretter out of Sauk Rapids Rice, and Julian Wright out of De La Salle, who's also a track star. The lone tight end is Travis Yonke of Parker's Prairie. He is uh, committed to North Dakota State, 6'5", 230. And of course, the quarterbacks, Roddy and Jansen uh, Beachy, who is committed to Minnesota State, Moorhead. So that is the offense for the North. Their head coach is Kevin Feeney out of Moorhead. How did you guys decide on Kevin Feeney? Randy, the coaches were selected last spring. You know, Moorhead has had a rich tradition of great football up yep. there, and Kevin's been a big part of that. For the last five years, he's done a tremendous job. And as a matter of fact, since 2011, he's been selected as a coach of the year three times. So we're real happy to have Kevin as a North coach. All right, so that's the North head coach. Let's meet the defense now for the North. We're going to start with the big guys up front. How about Luke Kubish out of Totino Grace? Six foot, 290, plugs up the middle. He's a great football player. Also on the defensive line, Stephen Keach out of Two Harbors, is committed to North Dakota. Christian Hurt voted the Defensive Lineman of the Year in the Metro East. John Knoll out of Centennial. Four more guys, Devon Harris, a Division I kid out of Big Lake. Rowan Morgan had a rock solid season for Moundsview. Thomas Casty, 6'6", 295 out of Underwood. And Andrew Eklund, an outstanding player out of Aiken. They've got some linebackers. Matamidai's Eric Bjork, 5'11", 190. I've watched this kid the last couple of years. Great motor, hard hitting, smart. He's going to be one to watch in the uh, game in December. The linebackers also include Jaden Morton, who had a great season for Providence Academy. Uh, Janky was a star for Southridge, and Chris Kurtz is only 5'9", 185, but he's a really good player. The other linebackers include Kloss from Duluth Denfeld, Gerald Shepard, played more like a strong safety at Armstrong this year, Matt Cushall. Uh, out of Ricori's heading to North Dakota on scholarship, and Adam Nelson, a star two-way player for Elk River. Defensive back, Omar Brown out of Minneapolis North. Great one-handed interception here. They just didn't throw at the kid this year, and when they did, that's what happened. He's, uh, he's uh, being recruited Division I. The secondary is really good because you got Brown, you got Jason Call, fabulous two-way player from Blaine, Nate Farm, the safety out of Moundsview, Kevin Egbrojor out of Elk River, tough player, and Dre Dirksen had a real nice season for Wilmer. So that is the North heading into the All-Star game in December. What stands out to you on that group? Well, I tell you, Randy, we have some great talent in the state of Minnesota. We had over 250 nominations for the 92 roster spots that we have. I'm certain that there's another 92 who could play in this game Absolutely. just as well. On a side note, from the small town of Purim, Jensen Beachy is the fourth quarterback from that city to play in this All-Star game. That's fabulous. Yeah. All right, so we've met the North. When we come back, we'll meet the South All-Star. Stay with us.
All right, so you met the North, thanks to Dave Fritzy. Um, one person, one player you're not going to see coming up on the lake on the South is Lakeville North's big offensive lineman uh, Bryce Benhart. Um, it's not that Bryce isn't qualified to play in the game. We all know he is. He's going to Nebraska on scholarship, but he's also playing in an all-star game later, I believe in the month of December, early January, and he's also a wrestler. So he basically has bowed out of playing in this game to honor that other commitment and also honor his wrestling commitment. So you will see another offensive lineman from Lakeville North uh, making the roster who's also uh, very good. That's coming up uh, when we introduce the uh, South roster. So um, that was one name that was missing when I first got the list and said, wait a minute, how can that be? Uh, and then the explanation was made as to why uh, Bryce is not uh, going to play uh, at U.S. Bank. Uh, the date of the U.S. Bank uh, game is the Saturday. I want to say it's the 15th of uh, December, uh, 15th or 16th, uh, Saturday afternoon. So should be uh, a fabulous day uh, to watch uh, these great Minnesota football players play. It's exciting to be able to introduce them and also exciting to watch them. Coming up now is the South. Welcome back to the Prep Sports Extra. The Minnesota Showcase Director, Dave Fritzy, is with me. And we're going to introduce the South roster now. What's so cool about this football game is that virtually all of the Division I kids in Minnesota, and there's a lot of them, guys like Quinn Carroll, who we'll see in a minute, are going to play in this game, aren't they? You know, Randy, prior to having the game in December, we played it in the summer. Yep. And because of that, the Division I kids had to report for practice in summer school, and we lost all of them for the game. It was a big bonus for us to be able to play in December at U.S. Bank yeah. and uh, get all the best players in the state of Minnesota. We're really excited about it. It doesn't hurt to have the Vikings on your side. It doesn't hurt at all. Yeah. All right, so let's meet the uh, South, starting with their massive offensive line. And here he is, Quinn Carroll, number 75, 6'6", 280, four-year starter, never gave up a sack this year. All-state tackle is heading to Notre Dame on scholarship, and he'll be one to watch in December. Here's the South O-line. Carroll, Jack Hansen out of Lakeville North, Jason Samick, a great two-way player for St. Thomas Academy, Galgano out of Minnetonka, and Riley Weiss out of Boldy, 6'1", 300. Five more guys on the offensive line, and here's the list. They all had really, really good seasons, and a couple of them were really solid two-way players, and so that is the South offensive line. The quarterbacks are led by Cole Kramer, the Gopher recruit. He's 6'1", 180, strong arm, incredible leader on and off the field. Kramer is the straw that stirs the drink at EP. Jason Williamson, what a season he has had as a running back for Owatonna, the future Gopher, lighting up the scoreboard for the Huskies. And good luck stopping him when he runs behind Quinn Carroll. And Waconia receiver Will Copy. Size and speed at 6'3", 195, can make the big plays like this one. He's going to get a chance to prove himself against the best in December. And Lakeville North's number 91, Will Mostart, an incredible defensive lineman chosen to the showcase game as a tight end. He'll likely play both sides of the football. Mostart is headed to North Dakota State on scholarship. So the South has two tight ends, including Ethan Matsky out of Spring Grove, their receivers look like this. Copy, Simon Stark out of Eastridge. Great statistical year for him. Also a really good quarterback. Uh, Mitchell Stanchina is an outstanding player from Northfield. Andrew Ryder had a really nice year for Rosemount playing both sides of the ball. Joining Kramer is Aaron Severson, just up the road from Eden Prairie. Two really good quarterbacks, Severson out of Minnetonka. And the South running backs will include Williamson and then Josh Navratil from Pine Islands, committed to North Dakota. Peyton Schaefer, defensive star at Park, going to play offense as well. And Corbin LaFlay really was the guy that helped Hastings have such a great year. And Thomas Mergen joins that team out of Rochester. 
blockbuster century. So the South is coached by Apple Valley's Chad Clendenning. His Eagles had a rough year this year, so I'm sure for Chad, this is going to be a nice uh, opportunity. It'll for be him. really fun for him, Randy. You know, he also was selected last spring. He's coached at Apple Valley for 19 years. Yep. He's, last year they had a 10 and 2 record and made the semifinals of the state tournament. And he was coach of the year three times since 2013. And on a personal note, I was Chad's position coach at Apple Valley High School in 1987 <laughs> and 1988. Good player? A while ago. A great player. Oh, well, very good. All right. So let's meet the rest of the South roster. We're going to look at the defense and the tackle machine out of Chanhassen. Cade Plath, number seven, led the state in tackles during the regular season, six foot, 210, the suburban white district defensive MVP. Woodbury's Joe Rossibo had a sensational season, named the Metro East Defensive MVP, has led the Royals to the state quarterfinals in 6A. Really good player. Rossibo, Plath, Nick McCabe out of Caledonia at 6'1", 205, and uh, London Strong uh, from Sleepy Eye. He's 6'3", 215. These aren't little guys playing linebacker. Zach Ringnell is out of Fairmont. Michael Herbst from Prior Lake, Clay Herding out of Mankato West, Zach Moeller out of Eastridge, 6'1", 210, and the guy who led the state in sacks this year, Mitch Hendrickson out of Holy Angels. Burnsville's big number 95, and when I say big, I say big. 6'2", 295, he plugged up the middle for the Blaze this year. It's Kyle Atkinson, so he's part of that big defensive line. Joining him is Ethan Jackman, who's headed to Air Force out of Chaska, 6'4", 290. Christopher Lewis led a strong Owatonna defense. Matthew Olsom out of Wasika, 6'2", 260. Other guys on that line, Molson, spark plug for SMB's defense. Logan Hofstad out of Cannon Falls. And Boyk out of Dawson Boyd round out the South defensive line. Matt Cavanaugh, number 34. On defense, you'll see the tackle here. He also is one of the state's leaders in carries for Edina. Just a tremendous two-way player, and he's smart, too. He's heading to Harvard next fall. So Kavanaugh will lead the South secondary, along with Leary and Hall from Southeast Minnesota. Marcus Shepley, very good uh, safety out of Burnsville. The last two in the secondary, Evan Guywitz out of Rosemount and Jacob Bennett from Zambroda Mazeppa. And they have a kicker. It's uh, Ben Limberg out of Rochester Lourdes. And my understanding is the North will pick a kicker from the players that are on their roster because they have a few uh, that, uh, that can do that position. 92 players in all for the showcase in December. And I'm assuming that uh, tickets are still available. How can people find out about that? Tickets are available now, Randy, at vikings.com slash showcase. Okay. They are $16 for adults, $8 for students and children, five and under free. And finally, I'd like to say a big thank you to the Minnesota Vikings for their financial support for this game. Yeah, it's been fabulous. It's been so much fun to watch these great players play inside U.S. Bank Stadium. That's it for the showcase roster. We'll be back with more Prep Sports Extra in a minute. Um, okay, well, uh, we'll. <laughs> okay, well, let's. Uh, I'll try and stretch as best I can. No promises, though. All right, so there's the roster. Um, one thing about the South that I found interesting is that uh, the most starts, they have twin brothers that play for Lakeville North. Both are going to NDSU. Uh, Will Mostart uh, on scholarship. Eli Mostart is uh, going to be a preferred walk-on at NDSU. Both are great football players. So Will makes the team. Eli does not. Um, but again, I mean, Lakeville North is so loaded, folks. Um, they could put, you know, easily a couple of other guys uh, on that roster just because they've got so many uh, really good football players. So... My thanks to Dave Fritzy for coming in and um, 
organizing all of that and making sure that we're able to uh, let everybody around the state and uh, anybody else that's watching uh, to find out all the players that are taking part at U.S. Bank Stadium. So we're going to finish the show up now. All right, let's run through a few scores here tonight. Minneapolis North, that game played at New Ulm High School, defeats Redwood Valley to remain undefeated. So North is going back to the state semifinals. They're now in class 2A, 20 to 12 the final. Barnesville shut out Moose Lake Willow River. 40 to nothing was the final in that game. A couple of other scores tonight in 2A. Painesville, 52 to 14 over Pillager. And Caledonia from Southeast Minnesota, big win over New Richland, Heartland, Ellendale, Geneva. 41-0 was the final in that one. Three games were played in nine-man competition. Cromwell Wright advances with a victory 14-7. Spring Grove from Southeast Minnesota may be the best team in nine-man, at least some think they are. They beat uh, RTR 27-26. And Mountain Lake, a nice win for them over Verndale, 23-6. State football playoffs will continue tomorrow around the state. And we'll have a few games covered in our sportscasts tomorrow, like the noon game at TCO between Chaska and Owatonna. Of course, that game features Jason Williamson, the star running back for Owatonna. Uh, we're also going to cover that uh, game at Shakopee West Middle School between St. Thomas Academy undefeated against Tartan. That should be a pretty good football game. They did not meet in the regular season. Uh, St. Thomas Academy uh, blew through all of the competition uh, that they faced this year, so this could be a tough test for them. Also, we're going to cover that Jordan-Rochester-Leward game played at noon at Hopkins High School. That's in Class 3A. Of course, Jordan has had a really nice year, led by Marlon Wiley and Bryce Seavers, their quarterback. That should be a good game. And then uh, tomorrow at 5 o'clock, I think maybe one of the better games of the day, Spring Lake Park will take on Elk River uh, at TCO Performance Center in that other 5A state quarterfinal. That's it for our show tonight. A reminder, we are back next Friday night for our all-metro show where we will name an offense, a defense, and coach of the year. It's our final Prep Sports Extra of the season next Friday night, and we hope to see you then. Thanks for watching. Have a great weekend.